my English has clearly degenerated as my computer science skills increase. That's a good sign. The program that I went to is called MCIT at the University of Pennsylvania. So uh, this is a program for people who don't have a computer science or engineering or some sort of like computer science technical degree and want to get a master's in it and then you can go do all these like computer science jobs in the future. So it's a two-year degree um, with the first year being very core uh, so that you learn all the core computer science and like the mathematical stuff. Uh, the undergrads would have learned their first year so it kind of like catches you up to speed and by the end you know you should know your basic computer science information. And then in the second year um, this is where you take electives like data science, natural language processing. Clearly I went into data science after. But yes, so you have a bunch of electives you can do, uh, like systems engineering, databases, all sorts of things that normal people in computer science master's degree would be doing for their two years. I'll just talk a little bit about my experience throughout that entire journey. So, you know, as I was saying, coming in, I knew a little bit of programming, I knew a little bit of Python, I took a couple classes. My undergrad in Python, I also worked in bioinformatics, so I knew R, some data science stuff, but I never really like learned all the like algorithms and like data structures and all those things. Didn't know how to do any of that. Also, my math background was actually very like, was very weak. So I never did like linear algebra, uh, what else do math people do? Discrete math. So coming in, you know, it's pretty nervous. It's like, oh, I hope I pass and I'm able to get a job. And then I was right to be nervous because my first year was really quite difficult. I don't want to scare anyone, but it really was probably the most challenging year I've ever had academically. So let's see, the three classes that I took in my first semester were, um, the course codes were CIT 591, 592, and 593. So 591 was a introduction to Java class, and that class pretty much just taught you how to do like four loops, like just basic Java programming. Um, and 592 was the class that taught you discrete math, probability, and proofs, which I've never done before until now. And 593, which is a basic computers, I think it's like computer systems class. It's very um, like low level stuff. We pretty much went from like bytes and bits all the way up until C level-ish. So you learn about how computers are actually working under the hood. You also have to program in assembly, which is a language that's very low level. And in the second semester, there was a continuation, which were 594, 595, and 596. In 591, 594, it was a continuation of programming in Java. And in this class, we learned about data structures mostly. I, would, I think this is the class that's most useful if you want to eventually become a software engineer, uh, because it's mostly your early code things and whatnot. And for yeah, so that was, but it, it was it definitely wasn't an easy class because this whole program is is very accelerated. So you're coming in not really knowing anything because you don't really have that background. There's no like background that you need to have. And if you're like me, you don't have a very strong math background uh, or coding background. It was just like, yeah. So. Yeah, 594 and then 595 was a continuation of the systems class. So we did some, a little bit of web stuff, kind of get a taste for that. And also, maybe we did, yeah, we did more C, we did C++, uh, yes. And uh, it was more like a sampling of different programming, programming languages. And finally, it was 595 six was the algorithms class and this is kind of like a continuation of 592 in the fall so this was more you don't really do coding this class except for a little bit of python but you learn about like recursion you learn about different sorting algorithms um calculating like big o 
complex, that's uh, time complexity and things like that. Uh, and that essentially brought you up to speed, more or less, so that you can go take electives the following year. So let's talk about internships, right? So it was definitely, it was very difficult, not only because you had to learn all the things that you probably didn't know before, you just kind of like thrown into that. Uh, on top of that, you also had to do internship preparation. So in doing internship preparation, if, if you want to be a software engineer, which most people want it to be, you had to do like lead code prepping, uh, whiteboarding, things like that. Not really so much like behavioral stuff, but you have to do a lot of prep for the interviews, the technical interviews. So personally, uh, I didn't really do lead code. Um, so I'm not saying that you have to do lead code because I didn't do it and I still got an internship, but that was also my personal experience. Uh, most people I knew did do lead code. And the reason why I didn't do it was because like I thought I was so good and I was able to do everything and amazing. I was just like very overwhelmed. So I just ended up maybe doing like one or two lead codes and try to depend on my personality through the interviews if I didn't know how to answer the technical questions. So anyways, I ended up interning at Goldman Sachs uh, doing software. I went as a software engineer, but I ended up doing more like data science related stuff because uh, that was the part that was more interesting to more interesting to me. So uh, yeah, a lot of people I know, they end up like doing internships with like big tech companies like Amazon. I don't know about Facebook. I think there was like one that went to Google, um, but a lot of other people also do like smaller startups. Um, if you're doing software engineering for like mid-sized companies. So I don't know if I have this statistic completely right, but I do believe that almost everybody, I do believe that everybody that wanted to get an internship did get an internship. There's no guarantee that you get like an amazing internship by like Google, you know, or like Amazon or anything like that. But everybody that wanted an internship in software engineering did get one. And this program is really designed for you to be able to get a job in the end. So they're very good at that internship process. Um, so you, of course, you also have to put in a lot of work for it, but that pen branding, as well as just like working hard, that pen branding and the entire program really helped you prepare for that. So the second year of MCIT was very, was like, was when you're released into the wild of, other, of all the other computer science people. And you can take whatever electives that you want. Uh, but bear in mind, even though we did do this sort of like one year ramp up acceleration boot camp kind of thing, you're really not at the level of people who do like a four year undergrad degree. So my advice is to actually still be pretty cautious about what electives that you're choosing. Like you don't want to go and jump in and do like this super high level C++ programming when you've done it for like maybe two weeks uh, in 595, right? Of course, if you want to do that, you can also teach yourself, but I did not do that. <laughs> and most people I know also did not do that. Um, so yeah, like the electives, you have choices uh, in like natural language processing, in data analytics, data science, databases, uh, web development, web design, I think there's some other classes that are like more systems related as well, cryptography. And you can also do more advanced algorithm classes, more like theoretical algorithm classes. So yeah, you take your electives and the thing with, because it's a two year degree and last year you were, you know, like busy preparing for internships and stuff, then this year rolls around and now you're really busy preparing for job interviews assuming that you weren't one of the lucky people who landed an internship and then became full-time and then don't actually have to do worry about that anymore but for myself and most other people we then had to prepare for job uh, for job interviews for software engineering people usually tend to do better uh, in their full-time job interviewing than their internships naturally because they have more experience at this point and you do get a lot of people landing those big names, like people uh, going to Google, Facebook, just like Fang in general, as well as other startups as well. And if you're not doing software engineering, there's people who go to data science roles, whether in tech or not in tech, 
Um, I am in a data science role right now in tech. Uh, and you have people who are also doing quant trading or like quantitative research. And there's even people who pursue PhDs either in computer science or non computer science as well. As um, there's also people doing law. It's a pretty diverse group of people wanting to switch their careers, whether that be completely in tech and doing software engineering or just wanting to do a job that's more technical in nature. I would say my experience was positive, um, and I don't think I would have been, been able to land the job that I have right now if I didn't go through the MCIT program, and I think a lot of other people would also agree with that statement. It's a master's degree that really elevates your current resume if you want to make that career jump. And just that branding, as well as the preparation that you get, just by being in a whole pool of people pretty much doing the same thing as you, as well as being exposed to uh, recruiters, does make it pretty worthwhile. Yes. So the cost definitely isn't cheap. I believe it's around 50k each year. Uh, I would say it is worth it though, because the starting salaries of most people coming out of here is six figures. So, you know, you make that back within one year of working or, you know, one or two years, depending on how good you are with money and how much you're making. But I do think overall it is worth it. In terms of admissions, I think the year that I was admitted, the admission rate was maybe around like 11%. Don't quote me on that. They do publish how much it is. Uh, how many people are admitted each year and you do have to do the GRE you have to go through like this like, application process so the average GRE verbal was in the high 150s and for the math it was 167 so you do have to score pretty highly on the quantitative reasoning portion which makes sense because this is a quantitative program I would say if you're going to, there's a lot of people who get like great GRE scores, who have great GPAs, pretty good recommendations. So if you really want to stand out in that pool, the most important consideration would be your personal statement. So you can imagine these reviewers have like tons and tons of applications that pretty much like look really similar. Like unless you're like really interesting background, you're, you know, probably pretty similar to the next person in the application pile. And you know, reading all those personal statements it gets really boring really fast. So if you want to stand out, make your personal statement good, make it interesting so that the reviewer can actually remember you after they read your application. And of course, make sure that all your scores are there. I can't think of anything else to talk about, but feel free to reach out to me if you guys want to get a little bit more information on something that I didn't mention or I was very confusing about something and I can help explain that a little bit better. So thank you all for watching. I hope this was useful.